It has been months since Hurricane Charlie tore into Punta Gorda, but there is still a sense of fear and disbelief. I've lived in Florida all my life. I've been through a couple Category 2s, but never know Category 4. I'll never live through it and never stay for another one. We've seen the damage that they cause in the southeast and in the Gulf Coast. But if we look back in history, we see that we've had significant damage from hurricanes in the past in New England as well. 1938 and 1954 hurricanes were both Category 3 hurricanes at landfall. Major hurricanes. Somebody had sent a barometer for a gift for their husband, and it arrived that morning, and he opened it, tapped it, and dropped down the inside hurricane, and he said, this damn thing doesn't work. I didn't know what to expect, so you didn't fear what you didn't know. So we didn't know how grave it was. Probably our hurricane of record is the 1938 hurricane, which caused significant damage, and today's numbers would be, you know, billions of dollars in damages and cost many lives. It took less than 24 hours for that storm to move from the Bahamas to New England to make landfall. It was moving at over 60 miles an hour. The trouble was there were people who did not realize how bad it was. And I know for a fact there was two women that went around the ocean drive and they were lost because the tidal wave hit. I'm going to tell you it was very scary. Hurricanes are extremely dangerous. Oftentimes people just associate them with being a, a coastal phenomenon, you know, large waves or wind, but you also have other problems like inland flooding. You can have tornadoes, you can have flash flooding where there's thunderstorm areas. And if that times out, as it has in the past with storms like 38 and 54, with high tide or astronomical high tides, the highest tide of the month, as it did in 38, when those elements come together, that's when you get uh, massive devastation, historical devastation. My father wanted to get out right away that morning, maybe 9, 9.30, and my mother kept saying, oh, Norman, stop being a baby about it. It's not going to hit. It, it slams and it slams fast, because when we first saw it coming out of the road, we almost didn't have time, I'd say within 60 seconds. It was all, it was like coming so fast. You'd think you'd have 10 minutes for that, but you just don't. It's like in seconds. To people who decide not to evacuate, I would say that not only are they putting themselves at risk, but they're putting first responders at risk. Heed the warnings and take them seriously. It's never an excuse to ignore hurricane warnings. We saw it last year with Hurricane Earl. That storm took a last minute jog to the right. We were extremely lucky with the way that that played out. And we've seen that play out in years past where these storms do come up and we are in that cone, that forecast cone, and you need to take preparation for that. There's a whole generation of New Englanders that haven't even experienced a hurricane period. It's been 20 years since Bob. We battle complacency. Every year when we, we come on and we talk about the hurricane forecast or we're talking about tropical storms or hurricanes that are out there, um, you know, I think we're battling that, oh, ho-hum, we haven't had one in 20 years, we're never going to get one here, we don't have to worry about it. We say it every year, but it's really not a matter of if we are to get another major storm, it's when it's coming. The most important thing that you can do to prepare for a hurricane or tropical storm this hurricane season, especially pre-season when you have the time, is to have a plan. You need to have a plan. You can go to ready.gov and find out how you make a plan, how you get a emergency kit of supplies, and I think that's the best way to protect yourself personally from a hurricane. You should remove items from around your house that might blow around and break your windows. You can protect your windows using storm shutters or plywood. You should clean out your gutters and downspouts. Make sure that you have fuel in your car and other supplies on hand, such as water, batteries, and generators. You should review your insurance policy. Homeowners insurance often does not cover flood, so you may want to get a policy through the National Flood Insurance Program. I was actually a local official on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi during Hurricane Katrina, and I saw personally and professionally what that can do to people's lives. That's something that I would not want to see happen here in New England. And I think that the, the best thing we can do right now is to mitigate those risks, is to be prepared.